For the shoulder, there's two different ways you can go about this, and it's more or less the surgeon comfort. Um, I usually have them sitting up uh, like a beach chair position, just in a chair, and what I'll do is I'll drape them out a little bit, so I'll expose the shoulder, and I'll take some sort of chuck and just put it behind them so we don't get any sort of fluids on their shirt or the clothing. And what I'll do is, I'll, again, I'll draw out their landmarks, and it, it really is helpful to draw the landmarks out. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll palpate the acromion, and then I'll sort of draw this out a little bit, just like I would in surgery. It helps me establish where my landmarks are going to be in case I get lost. Again, I'll sort of find where the visor's portal would be, and I'll feel the coracoid in the front, and I'll mark that out as well. And again, I'll swing around with my finger on the coracoid and find that soft spot, and that's again where you're going to be coming in. Remember now, this is a 30, uh, not a 30 degree scope, this is a zero degree scope, so you want to sort of come in maybe a little bit higher than you would normally uh, if you're doing an arthroscopy. And again, you want to come in and aim just for your coracoid. So once I mark this out, I'll again anesthetize the skin. Just like with the knee, I want to anesthetize any portal I might actually use. So for myself, I'll do about one cc skin wheel right at the posterior sort of aspect of the shoulder where my soft spot is. And then I'll come around to the front of the shoulder. And what I'll do is I'll mark out, um, again, where I think I might come through with the rotator interval. And I'll sort of just inject a big skin wheel there as well in case I need to come through with an 18 gauge needle to palpate something. Once my patient's been anesthetized, again, I'll, I'll come in here and I'll put my finger on the coracoid, confirm my soft spot in a sterile manner, and I'll direct my, my eye into the joint, aiming for that coracoid. Once I come in, uh, as I enter in, I'm going to try and go ahead and aim right for my coracoid and get up over top of the, the, the humeral head. As I access the joint, I'll go ahead and I'll retract my uh, optics and allow them to come out. And again, it gives me a visualization immediately inside my joint. And here we get a really sort of good view coming in of my humeral head there my glenoid to the left of my screen with some soft tissue and again I can look at my rotator cuff coming atop and attaching to my humeral head. Okay, This is all without moving the patient's arm. Their arm is just at their side and they're, they're comfortable. But what this does allow me to do also is have a dynamic evaluation. So much like with the, the leg, I'll put a, a chuck around the arm here so I can grab the arm and I can sort of abduct it out to the side 45 degrees and see that insertion of my uh, rotator cuff on my humeral head or I can dynamically internally and externally rotate the, the shoulder as well to evaluate my rotator cuff as it comes across. From here I can push forward and I can watch my biceps come across over top of the humeral head and attach to my glenoid there. So again that's a really good look here at my biceps hiatus and again I can forward flex the arm to sort of see where that sort of biceps escapes down the, um, the sheath. Again, I can look here as my biceps comes and attaches to my socket and really see where things are at. If I have some synovial tissue in my way or some synovial fluid, I can do a gentle flush and sort of blow that out of the way. And again, I can see where my labrum sort of comes down on my glenoid and look at my cartilage as it comes down. So in the front of the shoulder here, I'm looking about the 3 o'clock position. There's sort of my divot in the pair of the glenoid. And I can see my labrum attaching there. And I can swing down underneath the humeral head, almost going lateral with just turning my hand. Again, this is a zero degree scope, so just by turning my hand 90 degrees to the right, I'm now in my mind's eye seeing a lateral position. So I'm down here at the bank cart area where the tissue would tear for shoulder dislocation. And again, I can look at that cartilage there and I can sort of make it flutter by giving a little flush. I can pull back and I can retract underneath the humeral head and see my axillary recess and my pouch, make sure there's no loose bodies. And again, just by putting the arm out to 15 degrees lets me get underneath there. From here I can sort of pull back my hand, look at my posterior labrum as I come up the back of the glenoid and get back to my superior labrum there where my biceps attaches. So sometimes I'll get asked like, you know, how can I sort of palpate that labrum see if it's unstable or not? Well the first thing is again giving a little bit of flutter or flush sometimes will make that sort of elevate up. But if I can't I can come in through my rotator interval and again looking at things here I can come right underneath my biceps above my subscap, which is directly in front of you at sort of the equator of the picture, and I can evaluate where my soft spot's going to be. So if you have trouble finding it, one of the trips that I've learned is I'll sort of drive right up to where that rotator interval is, I'll then retract my optics a little bit, and I'll push up right to the skin. I can actually look and see on my skin sort of where the optics want to push through. I can sort of palpate it right here. So I'm feeling just through the skin my my eye. And again, I have my optics out so I can see the light source a little bit. And what I can do is I'll take my aging gauge needle and go through my previously anesthetized area. I'll feel my my eye sort of poke through the skin a little bit here. And again, I'm just sort of seeing where that little optic eye is. And I'll put my needle right through that interval. 
when I think that I'm coming in, I can then sort of pull back through here. And I'm back inside the joint. And there's my rotator interval. And again, now I'm in with my spinal needle, okay? So now that I'm in here, I can sort of palpate and sort of tell, is my labrum torn? Is it not torn? Uh, is it peeling off? Am I able to elevate things up and off? Do I want to go ahead and look at my biceps tendon, which again is going to be on the left side of my screen here. So I'll pull back, there's my biceps tendon. I can use my spinal needle to sort of palpate and lift up and see is this a slap tear that's degenerative or is there an acute component to it? By getting up underneath there, I'm looking for sort of scarring and I can pull my biceps down. What I can do here is I can look and bring that biceps into the joint a little bit and evaluate a little bit down the sort of hiatus there. I'll see some erythema on my biceps tendon, which I wouldn't have saw when the biceps wasn't inside the joint. So I can let that go and the erythema goes away. I can also check for some stability as my biceps goes down over top into that sort of sheath there. So again, this sort of gives me a way to sort of be inside the shoulder joint and palpate all the structures I need in a non-painful, non-traumatic way just by using an 18 gauge needle. And again, driving that optic uh, source right up to that rotator interval allows me to get in reproducibly without much discomfort. For guys that say they're more comfortable with their, their brain being in the lateral position, you can do this because it's a zero degree scope just by rotating your hand 90 degrees. So here I came in with the patient sitting up seated in a regular beach chair position, but now I'm just going to rotate my hand 90 degrees and now my brain is able to see things in a lateral position. So there's my rotator cuff coming up and sort of over attaching to my humeral head. I come back down here, there's my biceps tendon sort of attaching to my um, superior portion of my glenoid. And again, I can palpate that using my 18 gauge needle. I can evaluate my labrum. And again, if there's any sort of soft tissue in the way or any sort of fluid, I can blast that out just by giving a little flush. To look at my bank heart region, I can go ahead and extend the arm out 15 degrees and sort of look down low here at my labrum, which is a nice little view there. And again, I can sort of pull back a little bit and look at my posterior labrum and come back up the back of the glenoid and look at where it attaches back to my biceps again. All with the patient sitting up but allowing my brain to sort of function in a lateral position. Your patient's going to be sitting up. So in this case, what I'll do is I'll mark out my soft spot, which is the most reproducible uh, sort of way. So when I'm talking about my posterior portal, again, the patient's sitting up, the most reproducible way to sort of get that spot right every time is to sort of just feel with my middle finger of my um, non-surgical hand on the coracoid and swing over with my thumb into that soft spot. That's where I typically want to be. But if you're looking for a landmarks or references, it's typically about a centimeter down and a centimeter in from the anterior, anterior lateral edge of the acromion. That will sort of give me that reproducible spot. I like to keep my finger on the coracoid for reference and what I'll do is I'll come up here and again choke up a little bit so my finger's on the shaft and I'll sort of just gently push through my tissue into the joint and when I sort of feel that pop, I'll go ahead and retract my optics. If I have any sort of soft tissue that's uh, engaged on the end of my light source, I can flush it out of the way. But once you're in, you're able to get to that spot. When doing our dynamic evaluation of the shoulder, we can also evaluate the rotator cuff for tearing as well. Uh, you can swing over to the top here and you can see there's a tear here of the supraspinatus where it sort of meets um, the humeral head. So you can abduct the arm if you want while dropping your hand down about 15 degrees and sort of see that rent in the rotator cuff there. Or we can drive in a little bit and sort of rotate in its internal and external rotation plane to see that tear a little bit more. You know, one of the tip-offs when you talk about um, if there's a rotator cuff tear inside the shoulder is if you're someone who likes to insufflate, uh, and some guys will actually insufflate, you know, five to ten cc's of fluid into the joint to help distend it when doing this procedure. But if you insufflate and you go into the joint and the fluid's just not there or it didn't feel like it distended, odds are you have a tear in the rotator cuff because that fluid shot straight up into the uh, subacromial space and sort of blew up some of that bursa. You may find there's bursal tissue when you go into the joint when you first come in with your my eye. And that's a tip off. But again, you can see this rotator cuff, and again, you can dynamically evaluate it with internal and external rotation, as well as abduction and adduction. So one more way to sort of evaluate your rotator cuff tissue.